And we're going to continue with a series of videos with the Dataman 8072V. This is a product from Cognex. It is. It looks like a barcode scanner, but in reality, it's actually a verification camera. It has a it has a set of LEDs in here to be able to do verification at 30 degree, 50, 45 degree, and 90 degree, and that makes it very versatile. You can use it on a a lot of direct part marks on cylindrical surfaces, um, as well as printed labels. And it's actually, you know, probably the least expensive of all the verification systems that are on the market. It comes with um, a body like this, and it has a little clip plate um, that provides a specific offset between the marked surface and the focal part of the camera. It does require that you be in direct contact with your marked surface. So if you do have a mark in a recessed pocket, you might want to pull the cover and then that, that can actually give you um, <clears throat> the ability to see something in a res recessed pocket that's maybe, you know, three quarter of an inch deep. Um, anyway, so we keep this on and the unit itself comes in two connection options, an Ethernet version and a USB version. I have the Ethernet version connected right now, and I prefer it. I find that it's more, um, it's easier to actually get installed in most environments. Uh, <clears throat> the, the USB connection uh, requires a driver that gets installed with the software, and that driver has some compatibility problems with drivers from other companies, so that USB driver can be a little bit uh, troublesome. And the Ethernet device is just like a printer or another PC. Uh, it's really quite easy to set up and it's almost never blocked. If you have any um, network configuration rules for a printer, you would use the same rules for setting up the Ethernet version. It comes with a PoE brick, a power over Ethernet brick, and we've added a label at ID integration to make it clear as to which one plugs into the cable from the verifier and which one plugs into the wall okay so <clears throat> that's our setup and I think maybe I'll give you a quick run through here as to how this works you have a calibration card that also comes in the box and if you look at the bottom <clears throat> there is um, there are two codes and I generally pick the data matrix code but it really doesn't matter there are some settings on the bottom here that you need to pay attention to because the software is going to ask you for those settings when you calibrate okay so that's what you get in the box <clears throat> in addition if you buy it from id integration we give you a dvd with the software from cognex but if you don't have that you can go out to uh, a browser support.cognex.com and then select on data man support go to software and firmware and make sure that you pick the dm 8072 v if you pick any of these others it won't work. Now, there's lots of Dataman products. Dataman is a, you know, it's a brand of a series of cameras and handhelds that all um, <clears throat> are a little bit different. And the verifier, there's only one verifier, and it's this one. So make sure you download this one, which is version 577 SR5 as of mid-March of 21. You can see it's over a gig, so that's why we put it on a disk. Run it as an administrator. And when you're done, uh, you should be able to then under Cognex, see the setup tool right here. We have documentation as well. <clears throat> and uh, any release notes that might talk about bug fixes, whatever. Click on that. And when it starts up, it's going to search for, it's going to search its COM ports, USB ports, and Ethernet for possible connections to um, uh, to other Cognex uh, devices. So in this case, under it boots up, it's ready, ready in this connection mode, and it finds this um, Ethernet connected device right here. Here's my IP address, right? There's the firmware that's on it, <clears throat> and there is the MAC address. Now, if you were going to this is set up as DHCP out of the box. So if you want to set this up so that the um, camera is configured with a static IP address 
um, you'll give the MAC address to your IT consult or uh, administrator and he can reserve a static IP for you. Uh, because this device is set for DHCP, the Ethernet address that's going to be given is going to be the one that they set up as a reservation. You can get the MAC address right off of the sticker on the bottom of the device. Um, what else to say about that? If you want to change it to um, a static IP, we'll, we'll do that at the end here. Um, it's not too difficult. We can update the firmware as well by clicking here. And as you go up to firmware file up here, you click there and it'll immediately take you to this long path of program files, blah, blah, blah. And finally ending with that's the one that you want because it matches 577SR5, right? Install that and it takes about three minutes. We'll reboot <clears throat> and that's how you would upgrade your system um, down the road. Keep checking the website you know, every six months or so for any updates that Cognex might have. They are free. Uh, download them, install them, and you'll get the latest bug release, bug fixes, and uh, enhancements. Okay, so here we are. We're connected. So let's set it up. And if you see your icon here, you can double click or you can click down here. Sorry, I have to go to connect first. You can hit connect on the button or you can just double click here. And as you double click, uh, it'll s immediately go into the verification window. Now, this is the true check software from WebScan. WebScan is now part of Cognex and part of that marriage um, brought the WebScan software to the Cognex family. There are lots of things in here for uh, scientists and for normal people just focus on the main tab and the report tab. Okay, those are the only two you're going to really deal with. And after you figure out what angle is of lighting is going to be best for your product type, you're probably never going to go back to this. So the two main ones here, main and report, and these are the other icons you need to worry about. Here's a setup icon. So this is where you pick whether you're doing this for the FDA marking spec or the DOD marking uh, spec or HIBIC or GS1 generic uh, industry barcodes. When you click on some of these, will be additional menus that'll come down that are relevant to it. I'm concerned about UID, so that's where I'll click. This one, ISO 15415, is for printed thermal labels, paper labels. Um, the more common one these days is the AIM DPM spec. That's what I'm going to start with because what I have <clears throat> here is a anodized nameplate that I'm going to use. All right, so we'll keep that. Uh, I am not doing dot paint, so I won't check that. And then here for report settings, you can pick all kinds of additional things you might want to include on the report. But when you do so, it could push this to more than one page. So I try to keep it to just one page. Uh, you can put in user information, which is the company name, your own logo, that kind of thing, um, if you wish, but it's not required. Okay. Um, and under report settings, you also have save report. If you check that, it'll happen automatically. As soon as you get a result, um, a file will be created at this location. And that can be on the network. That does not have to be uh, on the local PC. Okay. All right. So with all of that, <clears throat> let's come back and let's go to the next step, which is calibration. So if you hit C for calibration, it's going to first ask you for what... Uh, is the R max and R min values. And again, you'll see that on the Cal card. If you look at the Cal card, you'll see them like here, right? For the data matrix code. So you'll see a different number uh, over here for this barcode. So I, I'm going to use the data matrix code for my calibration, so I'm going to put in those numbers. So down here, I have R max at 83 and an R min of 8. You can see I've done this before, right? And then you can put this down. You know, I'll, I'll point it towards you guys. Take your verifier. I guess I should have my cover on there, huh? Yeah. All right. And I think I am looking at a Proto one, so this one pops off. Okay. So we're going to take our reader, and we're going to put it on top of the data matrix code. We can hit center target here on this button, and then we'll place it right on top. Try to org orient it as close as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? Just make sure it's flat against the mark. 
and then we can just click on start calibration over here and it's going to go through each of the angles of lighting that is supported so we have you know 30 degree 45 degree and 90 degree right <clears throat> and then there's all the subcategories if you've got four quadrants of light yeah you, know, you might also want to do north south as a pair and east west as a pair and so forth right when it's done it'll tell you and now there's a time date stamp associated with that calibration step that we just did so now when we go on to do a verification of a real mark you're going to see that time date stamp for calibration uh, included on the report and that's great because that shows your customers that yes indeed you have calibrated this within a reasonable amount of time you can choose what that is it's a fairly quick process to calibrate so you know i always argue that hey you know I, it, it doesn't take that long to do it each time you're going to use the verifier in the morning but you, know, you could do it weekly you could do it monthly whatever you want to do okay so I'm going to do a mark. I've got a uh, an anodized nameplate here. I'm going to try to see if you can see it. It's got a data matrix code on it, and I'm going to. I have two choices. I can either click on the go live button here, or I can just use the trigger. So if I just click the trigger once, it'll go into live mode automatically. Then I can kind of bounce this thing around and see if I can get the center reasonably close. And then now you can also pick which lighting schema you want to use. So you could use that, or if you're a cylindrical product, maybe you wanted to use one of these two. It's completely up to you or to the spec, uh, the, the contract that you have with your customer as to what you're going to use for an angle of light. All right. When you're done, you can, again, click here on the button with the mouse, or you can just click the trigger button again and hold it steady while you're doing this. It's going to go through all of its algorithms, and in the end, it does two tests, right? One test is the image quality, which you hopefully will see in green here. And the other test is looking at the characters that are in the barcode. Do they include the ISO prefix? Do they include the ISO suffix? Do they have the right delimiter in between the individual um, segments of data? Uh, so two tests, a syntax test and an image test. Now, our barcode OS barcode scanners can do the syntax test. Quite frankly, I think it does a better job of that than the verifiers because it actually tells you what's wrong and how to fix it. Uh, these guys will just tell you it's an error. <clears throat> but a handheld scanner is never going to be able to do an image quality test that matches a verifier. A verifier has specific wavelength of light at a specific focal distance and angle and they have all these software algorithms that are agreed upon within the industry to provide a consistent grade across other verification systems from other companies. So you, you, if you want this image quality grade to really mean something, that's what this verification camera system is, is all about. Now, that's our main window. It gives us a green passing grade. Now let's go back to our report tab and you'll see here's the PDF file that gets automatically created. This is the user information. I only put in company name, but there could be additional things listed there. It says that I passed my spec, my 130N spec. I'm using the AIM DPM standard. My, my lighting was at 90 degrees. Here's my uh, um, raw data. And obviously these things in left, less than and greater than brackets that is not uh, the actual character it's a representation of an ASCII record separator ASCII 4 for end of transmission but that's how they represent it here you get other things you get a nice picture and all this and in a PDF file that gets saved to uh, a drive that you can look up the file name is the UII value of the mark and so that makes this uh, fairly easy to actually find this thing see that this is your UII, and that is going to be the file name .pdf that you'll see on your uh, auto-saved folder location. So you can easily go look up a previous mark based upon its UII value. Okay? And then you can even email that report to your end customer. So this reporting functionality is really, really nice. And it's, it's really the main reason why people buy verifiers is to be able to communicate a standards um, QC 
result to uh, their end customers. Okay. All right, so when you're done, you can click uh, that and you can always come back to the, the home button here and under connect. I just wanted to show one more thing here outside of verification. Again, if you want to configure this to static, you can now hit uh, reader configuration, go to communications, and now you can pick static IP and change to whatever the uh, IT administrators have reserved for this specific MAC address um, um, uh, and, and verifier location. Okay, so it's really once you're done with this, you're going to have to hit save settings and then uh, reboot the scanner, but that takes maybe less than a minute. And thereafter, you're done. You don't have to do any more configuration. Okay.